All righty. Going to do a second painting today of another lemon. So this will be the third lemon painting. And I'm going to go just a little bit more abstract, less tight than where I was before. The color of my light value and color is changing a little bit. So <clears throat> if I have my hand here, it looks a little bit more pinkish. It's not as pink as it's actually showing in the video, but that's okay. So color changes a little bit off. Um, I also have my colors up here because, <clears throat> excuse me, because I need to change those just a little bit. I added a little bit more white. All these colors, if you look at video two, stays the same. I am just gonna dive in and start to work on this painting. I have changed the composition of the lemons and so I will draw those in their general proportions um, just for kicks and giggles. So let's get this party started. I'm gonna start off with that and a little bit of that medium. What is that stuff called? It's called black oil. Also, I did a little bit of research and found out that I can have some music playing in the background. Um, and that music is currently playing. So i um, going to have this. This is copyright free music. That's a little bit more narrow. There we go. Peaks up right about there. Drops down. That means the lowest parts right there. And comes down. This is actually kind of nice with the music playing in the background. Kind of digging it. Um, so I've placed this a little bit lower than I usually would in a composition. I need to clean up that angle a little bit more. There we go. Um, because I want more darkness and less foreground on it. Now this is the fun part over here. It dives down. This is like half of an ellipse. Ooh, it needs to go higher though. See, I'm glad I saw that now because that would suck to change it later. Sounds like little water in the music or something. I don't know what that is, but. Double check the diameter to this diameter. Dang, looks so good. All right, it comes down like this. And then off to the side like that, comes up like that. There's a triangle right there. And it has this beautiful blue color that's sitting right there. And then it opens up. And the rind comes out like that, drops down, opens up like that. Doesn't go as high. Makes these little triangle shapes right here, which can be fun. Could be fun. Will be fun. That angle, this triangle. So I'm just going to be quick and try to get these triangles in there correctly and then it comes up and over and there's the rind. All right. Um, I know right now it looks like this funky weird thing, almost like an orange lemon slice area. This actually needs to come down just a titch right there and a titch right there. And this needs to come up just a titch. Ta-da! Okay, here we go, team. Now it's a matter of squinting, simplifying. Nice thing is, is I have high chroma yellow that's over here. I decided to add a yellow that is, um, I, I don't know what that is. Actually, this is a CAD yellow light and this is a cad yellow medium two different manufacturers this is more of a medium than that but hey i don't make the paints 
All right, if I go with this CAD yellow medium, dude, it, it is almost the exact yellow there in terms of the lights. So I'm gonna put it down. Scoop it up. And then it gets slightly darker in value. over here and that darker value it's more like a yellow ochre it, it goes slightly green so maybe maybe not that green let's go with that try that out Okay, we're splitting those two. It looks to be, it's like the same exact value as the background. And it goes a little bit darker than that. So I need to go with some ultramarine blue along with some yellow ochre, a little bit of red. Let's try that. Ooh, that looks better. That's gonna give me enough value to turn the form. It goes more red, so it's not as gray as that is. So um, maybe I'll, I'll make a note of that right now. Add some more red. Some of this yellow medium. Ooh, that's a good, good color. It's too much, but I need to go more than what I currently have. It's gonna mix in with it. Yes, okay, that looks much better. Um, then there are other parts that become more green, but let's move on. So I'm gonna put in some of these darker values and go with a bigger brush. Some raw umber. Let's see if I can do this to the beat. Some ultramarine blue, oh yeah. I could use some mineral spirits to make this more um, go longer, but I don't know if I want to because I already have mineral spirits that are on there. And I'm uh, totally assuming that the colors are spot on. I shouldn't say the colors, the values are spot on with this painting. The other thing I'm going to do is kind of like the last one. I liked the unfinished look that was in the painting, so I need to mix more paint. Somebody just sent me an email. All right. Drop that. Well, that's too low. Dang it, because I want it above this. So I'm gonna move the horizon line a little bit higher. Hopefully I'll remember that. Some of the paint is starting to dry from earlier this morning when I worked on my number two lemon painting and uh, some of the mineral spirits underneath is uh, still too wet so I need to get more paint and more black oil there we go it'll stick a little bit better Create a nice little vignette with it getting lighter in value as it goes away from the lemons. I 
Maybe I need a little bit more. Should probably switch to my left hand since this stuff doesn't make that much of a difference. But I might hit the microphone. So here I go. Oh, yep, I hit the microphone. Would it be good to switch to the left hand? Um, I don't know because it might get in the way of the of the camera. Oh, I guess not. Make it some abstract strokes there. All right, I'm digging that. Um, let's go with the next value. So this is gonna be too high um, or too low. And this is about the height. So I'm gonna move everything up a little bit more. But I don't wanna move things too far too far up because then I won't be able to get uh, the glowing effect that I want. Maybe I could. You know what? Life is about taking risks. Just take the freaking risk. A little bit more gray. Some medium. And let's go. Ooh, I need to go darker in value. There we go. Trying to get the same level. Well, that didn't work out too well, but that's all right. I'll go back in, take some darker value, and reestablish that shape. Make it just a little bit smaller than it actually is so that I have some room to manipulate and change form. Maybe make this side just slightly more transitional. So there's no rhyme or reason to working in the background or the foreground. I mean, unless you're wanting to um, make your shapes a little bit smaller so that you have more of a wet paint to work into, which some people prefer to do it that way. To me, it doesn't matter that much. It doesn't make that much of a difference to me, but... Um, I am, I can work background to foreground, foreground to background. It just depends on what I'm going for and if I want to change it up. So right now I'm feeling like I want to change it up. Oh snap, shadow shapes go right around there. Forgot to draw on the shadow shapes. What kind of an artist am I? Then that drops down a little bit more. I need more paint. All right, yellow ochre. 
white, gray. I think I get a little bit more yellow ochre. That was too much. White. More white. I don't know. I don't know if I should be playing this music. I like to listen to music that I can jam to. I'm not sure if I love this, but it's making it more entertaining for me to paint with than just listening to me talk. I'm talking, people. All right, just looking at shapes thinking I might make this shape just a little bit more yellow ochre right here because light is bouncing underneath it. It's less gray. It's almost like the light from the orange, yellow, lemons, whatever the fruit this is, is bouncing down onto the surface and creating this Nice little effect. All right. Now that I have some of those put in, cleaning my brush, gonna go into Shadow Shapes Transparent Oxide Red. Um, because this is a very cool light source, the shadows are going to be warmer. Let's see if I have the right value. Oh, that shoots back just a little bit. That's a pretty good color. It's not dark enough, but it's getting me to where I want to be. For right now. Ta da! Also, in the background, it, it looks like this portion gets colder. And maybe it's warmer in here and colder further out there. So I'm gonna go with just a little bit more of a coldness, add ultramarine blue. That will get it darker and it will get it cooler. You know what? I want to make it even cooler than that. More ultramarine blue. More ultramarine blue. Let's really... There we go. That's looking nice. Over here, more ultramarine blue. I'm also bringing it closer in because I uh, want to soften out these edges. If I leave it hard edged, then I have to come back in and finesse that a little bit more. I don't want to, so. Here, it's just a little bit darker.
There we go. All right. Cleaning off my brush. Gonna go with the edge of this. Dry brush again. There we go. Has a good sense of atmosphere now between the two at least in terms of shadow shapes. So let's keep going. Gonna paint in these lemons, the lemon shapes. I'm gonna need to get a good amount of paint. All right, um, I'm gonna use this bigger brush for the lemon cells, lemon cells. I don't know what to call them. Some Naples yellow, let's double check that color. It's way too light for what's going on and it's too orange. So I need to go with this medium. Needs to go more gray, I think, yeah. So what's the complementary of yellow? Let's go with some purple. So if I go with red, blue. Look at how gray that went. I don't know if that's the right value. Holy cow. That is like the right value over here. It's like the same exact value as the bottom. So I need to go darker. And I'll need to go a little bit lighter. Scoop that up and plaster it on there. Come on, dude. I'm talking to myself now. Also, it looks to be the same right here. And right there. But it needs to go darker in value. So we go darker in value over here. Needs to go more chromatic. Yellow medium. There we go. That looks so much closer, but not quite there. A little bit more yellow ochre. I just need to make it slightly darker. Ooh, that might have been too dark. Dang it. Too dark. Um, okay, so I'm going to take, I'm trying a different approach, taking a little bit of the, um, whatever color that was, raw umber, that's it. Let's see if that's the right, oh my goodness, that looks so, so close. A little bit more chroma, just a titch. Just putting some of these colors down so that I know where I'm going to be placing the other values and I have something that is more accurate to work off of. So if I put them further down here, this part gets lighter in value, almost to this value. And then it becomes more 
of a blue. There's a blue tinge that just goes off to the side. So I'm gonna push the blue a little bit. It's kind of a bluish green. I think it needs to be more of a violet blue. I don't know. That... Let's go a little more red. Oh, too dark. Dang it. Ooh, that's very chromatic. So chromatic. There we go. And then this part needs to go warmer, slightly darker in value. But this is it. Figuring out hue value chroma of various portions of the painting, comparing the hue value chroma of this plane versus another plane. And we're, we're going much darker. In here, gosh, for some reason, it looks like it needs to be more green. More green, more gray. And then it becomes more lemon-like over here. Some more yellows. I'm just looking back and forth and comparing these colors and values. And it looks like I'm more tonal with what I'm doing versus making a more yellow color. But maybe it's just because of my lighting situation and my light is not. But I mean, really, when I look at this versus this, they look so similar. This goes slightly darker. Even more darker. Here it goes slightly darker. And then it becomes more grayish. This, I still feel like it needs to go darker, but maybe it doesn't because I don't have the rind painted in there. And the rind is going to make it... Um, more contrasty. So I think I might leave that color right now. I want to put in... I want to put in just a slightly higher chroma right along this edge here as I build up that form because a little bit of that light is bouncing into it and it it makes it almost like an eyeball like the lights coming in here and it's lighting up in the edge but the darker values are sitting here because it's getting deeper into the the recess of the lemon all right, let's go slightly darker. Right here. Closer, maybe just a little bit more grayish. Gray is gonna turn into a green. I think as long as the value is right, it doesn't matter what color it is. At least that's what I keep telling myself. All right. 
And then we have all of this set over here. And this portion needs to go wider, but maybe not that white. Yeah, that's too white. Let's add a little bit of that king blue. Oh, too much. Let's add a little bit for the love of Pete. Holy guacamole. I'm digging it. All right. Oh no, I do not like the saxophone. No, it's funny, I used to like the saxophone. I wanted to learn how to play the saxophone until, I don't know when, sometime when I was in college or something, I listened to the saxophone and I'm like, I do not like that. Yeah, I'm not liking the saxophone. Should I change it? Yeah, I'm going to change it. It's funny, I changed it and the song was basically over. I probably shouldn't have changed it. All right, looking for the center... Just putting in some change of color and value in here. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. I'm digging it, yo. No diggity. Go a little bit more blue. That, that cell is a little bit more bluish. I don't know if I told anybody this online, but I signed up for the Cybertruck to purchase it four years ago when they unveiled it. And I was so freaking excited for it. Four years later, they send me a nice little thing saying, hey, do you want to configure and pay an extra $20,000? I mean, initially it was supposed to be 60,000 with full self-driving, it was gonna be 80. And I was like, yeah, okay, I, I can make 80,000 work. And then they just sent out this email to me in January. Said, congratulations, do you want to order it now? And I was like, ooh, I don't know. That's a lot of money, especially the Foundation Series. The Foundation Series, they said was 120, no, $100,000. So I decided no at the time. And um, they didn't remove the offer. They just had it sitting there and said, um, configure it anytime. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll configure it sometime and sure enough in February some things changed in our finances and me being able to make a decision and so we decided to go for it so February 16th I think is when I put in my thousand dollar deposit to order it and I've been waiting ever since but you know I waited four years for it I can wait another couple months. Okay, I don't know if I'm digging that yet, but I'll keep going. Keep going. Um, 
I have the other part of the Rhine to mix up. Let's go with this Naples yellow. I need to get my mall stick. The mall stick allows me to steady my hand as I'm painting. Okay, the question is, how do I get just bring some of this Naples yellow and put it on there but that's not enough I'm gonna get some flak white drop it on there Oh, I don't have the <laughs> the yellow part of the the lemon. Scoop up some more of that. So each cell. gets slightly darker as it turns form and goes into this portion of it. Let's see if that's the right value and color. Nope, too light. Needs to go just slightly more gray there. And I think my paintbrush is just a little bit, a little bit too big for what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna go to the fan brush and I will make more of a grayish tone here. That might be too gray. But let's just try it out anyways. Ooh, I don't know if that's too great. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of a nice complimentary to the the yellow, but I need to go and switch back over to the yellow. No, nope, too much paint. Clean it off. There we go. Maybe, maybe. All right, and then it goes into a high chroma yellow. We're gonna take this yellow, add it right to the edge. No, need more. Need more. Lighter yellow. Thank you. 
All right, there are some slight value changes that are going on here and some white that's going through it. I need to change that white a little bit more that's here. It's just a little bit too, too much. So I'm going to clean off my brush, change my color just a little bit more. I need to get that value and color. I think it was right about there. Let's try it out. Maybe not. That I think was this shape right here. Clean off the brush, go more with this purple. Cut out that shape. And then it gets more purpley brown. Purpley brown, is that even a color? Of course it is. Purpley brown goes over here too. Because there's a, a cast shadow right there. Need more chroma. But close to the same value because those values are so close together. Um, I'm going to go with this color over here. This darker value chroma yellow it's looking pretty good then I need to get slightly yellow higher chroma lighter value yellow that looks like a good one let's try it out no lighter because I need to get that sense of light that's coming through this semi-transparent form. This needs to go slightly lighter. All right, kind of digging it. Getting in the flow now. Okay, and then I'm gonna do slightly lighter values as they're cresting that area. So let's go with nothing too light, but slightly smaller. Titch of light in there. Pitch of light in there. Doesn't look like it's too light of a value, but I need to get just little bit more of a light value and really pop this. There we go. Um, and then I need to do the Rhine again because when I went back over it with that yellow, it kind of killed the shape and the color, so. Scoop it up. Scoop it up.
then it gets slightly more gray right here because it's turning form and then it gets just a little bit more of a bluish tune tone to it And then it gets darker in value. So if I mix it with this bluish tone, come in here, reestablish that rind shape. There we go. kind of pushing this up a little bit more so there's less rind on that back part and then it goes really yellow right along that edge and I want to make it glowy so I'm gonna go with this high chroma yellow come on more paint scoop it up That looks okay. Now I need to darken that value in there just a little bit more from the rind. Let's go with more of a blue. I don't know if that reads very well or not, but um, it's getting there. It's getting there slowly, but surely. Okay, and then I have this lower portion that I need to get painted in so that it has some better context. More values to play against because it's wrapping underneath the form. So I'm gonna go with this slightly darker value. Nope, darker. There we go, transparent oxide brown. Okay, just a little bit more on the other side. A little bit more. Maybe slightly darker and more red. 
Ooh, let's go that red. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm liking it. Okay, gonna go slightly darker in green. It's hard to see that color from, I, I'm getting this reflected light from the, from my windows. It's the downside of doing a painting from this angle is I can't see all of the information. I think I'm seeing it, but then I'm getting a reflection. Okay, and then That's looking pretty good. And we have just like these little teeny specular highlights. I don't know if this is gonna make it too kitsch or not, but if I just scrape a little bit and drag it over. Looking okay. All right, clean that off. I'm gonna go more with this blue and paint it right here. More of that blue, paint it right here. More of that blue. Nope, more. If you don't clean your brush enough, you won't be able to get these nice little subtle changes and details. It'll just muddy up your paint color and you'll ask yourself, what are you doing with your life? Which is okay. I mean, a lot of people ask that question. They wake up in the morning, they're like, what am I doing with my life? There's nothing wrong with it. Unless you keep asking yourself the same question and you're expecting different results, then there's something definitely wrong with it. Nope, lighter value. There we go. It's interesting. Um, I have some darker values that are sitting here. This has dried and it's gone flat because uh, it's more dry than what's going on here. But as soon as I varnish it, it's going to make a big difference. All right, clean the brush off. But I just noticed, I'm like, wow, how did those change colors so fast. All right, taking a glob of white, massage. I'm 
massage that white on there so it picks up more paint. All right, um, over here, I'm going to mix in with all of these colors and I'm going to, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to go over here and pick this higher chroma yellow. I'm gonna try something different. I don't know if this will work, but I'm gonna go with this higher chroma yellow paint it in the areas so that I can leave it and then paint the wider value over the top of it and that will soften out my transition while keeping a higher chroma color. Man, look at this lips. I tell you what. That's fun. Kind of has that feeling that it divots in. Lighter values, darker values. Um, gonna go with that more chromatic yellow. Uh, where can I put it? Let's go right there and let's go a little bit wider. Build up that paint quality and I can come over here and darker keep that slightly darker value that gets more red as it goes down over here so more of the red Um, hmm, hmm, I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm gonna go with something a little bit more chromatic. Let's soften out that form turn just a little bit more. Gotta turn that form really good, right? Clean off my brush, come back in here. There we go. All right, now we're gonna shift over to, I, I want, this looks too yellow for my liking. I want it to go more Naples yellow. So I'm gonna come back in here. That might be just a little bit too much, but I don't know, maybe not. Maybe uh, people just don't like paintings of fruit, you know? Maybe fruit is not the thing that people are interested in watching get painted. I don't know why. Fruit is freaking awesome. All right, so here is this. I'm going to go around on the inside of this. Oh yeah, that's working out. I'm digging it. So paint the yellow on first and then do the rhine after. Let's 
give up more paint. It's going to take a while to get this little white rind painted in. Got to be delicate. Soft. That sounds weird with this music. Why am I whispering? I don't know. I'm in this studio all by myself. It's a pretty big studio, but... Um, for some reason, I feel like I need to whisper when I'm talking. Maybe because I have a microphone literally two inches from my mouth and that is just weird. But it gives me such a melodious voice. You can change the settings on these microphones to decrease your voice. Pick up those lower tones. You can pick up your higher tones whatever you want people to focus on. So I'm just making slightly lighter values as it's going across the edge here because I want it to feel like it's turning form and I'm going to make more wider edges. I'm not going to go all the way around it because I just want to get some of these parts here. All right, yeah. So now with this form that's slightly turning, I have the center part of this lemon right there, just using the fan brush, painting my little happy center there it's not a tree i guess you could think it's a tree happy little tree so if i had which i mean i do if i wanted to make this painting really seeing and i wanted to spend a couple of days on it um, I would instead of just a couple of hours, but the intention or my intent with these paintings is just to have a little bit more variation and experiment, see what I can get in terms of look, looks, looks, in terms of different looks from my paint application. I just drive my brush off. So I could soften out those transitions, but all right. So that's that showing some good depth, darker values there, slightly lighter values there gets a little bit darker on the edge. I'm going to make the nice little glowing effect on it. This part, I'm just not happy yet. So I'm going to pick up some more paint. Nope, more paint. There we go, okay. I'm looking at it from a distance and it reads pretty good. Wiping off the brush and I'm gonna come in here and just soften out this little edge. So it looks like um, it's cut from the lemon. Like the lemon is, is cut, it doesn't look so um, separate makes it more harmonious. There we go. It's a good word. Then I'm going to add some more of this to the outside here. Okay. 
And that needs to be flattened a little bit more. So I'm gonna get a little bit more here. Oh, I went too far out. Dang it. Totally messed up. Shoot. I should probably just stop painting then. There we go. Yeah, buddy. Or I should just keep painting. All right. I, I think I am good with just keep painting. I want to change this color just a little bit. And, and I want to soften out this on the under part. Sometimes that's the downside of using so much paint. You get these little ridges and shadows get cast on the ridges and it no longer looks like it should. You have to get rid of the ridge so that it softens the form and turns away. All right. It's coming along here. And... Now the glowiness, let's bring this thing to life so that when somebody sees it, they'll be like, oh my gosh, I love that painting. Um, not that they wouldn't say it right now, but I mean, it's, it's good. It's not the best. It's good for a, a little study, a quick painting. A couple other little things I want to just slightly push and change there we go so much better I want to make that part a little bit more obscure I also want to soften out this blue edge that I have here so I'm gonna bring in that background lose that line so if you want things to look flat, you basically paint a line. If you want things to have more dimension, then uh, don't paint the line. Paint a shape. I, I took a workshop from Stephen Assail, a portrait painting workshop. It was a good experience working with him, beside him, by him. Anyways, he's a good guy. Stephen Assail is a good guy. and. I'm working on this portrait. We're all working on the same portrait. And um, I'm like, I really want to apply this stuff. So I need to, I'm going to take it home. So I, I took um, some painting materials home, not home at the uh, Airbnb that I was staying at. And in the bedroom of the Airbnb, I started to work on a painting and I worked on it and I brought it over to Stephen Assail and the next day and said, Hey, I worked on what we talked about with starting stuff. Please give me a critique. And he said, sure. He said, you're too linear. That's basically all he said. Well, what do you mean? I'm too linear. It's like that your, your shapes and stuff, they're too much of uh, line work. It's not enough mass, like in terms of painting masses and shapes, you need to paint the shapes more and less lines. It's like, oh, interesting. And so we worked on some more stuff that day. And then I went back to the Airbnb and I masked in my painting. He said, get the feeling first is what you should go for. Then start to execute the shapes better, render it out. So that's kind of what I did. Took it back to him and he looked at it. He's like, oh, so much better. Yeah, see how that how you turned the form and masked in the shapes. It's more interesting to look at. So I feel like I learned a good amount by talking to Stephen Assail about form and mass. And that's not the right color. Come on. There we go. By painting form and not lines. 
because that will make your paintings more interesting. So I try to do that with my paintings nowadays. Um, I try not to be as linear. I feel like John Singer Sargent was pretty linear and so I wanted to paint just like John Singer Sargent and um, which is ended up, it's ended up what happened. But I uh, feel like I could do so much better. So I now try to paint in forms instead of instead of lines like I'm drawing when I'm painting so I try not to draw when I paint I try to paint while I'm painting just like right now I'm massing in this shape I'm trying to make it pop a little bit more darken down these values just a little bit there we go all right um, now it's time to get that glowy on you might be like why why do you paint the glowy and the glowy just makes it more fun I think makes it more entertaining to look at more fun for me to paint I'm gonna let the painting dry right there and get rid of that because right now I'm just petting the the canvas okay so to get the glowing effect, hmm, where should I put these colors? Um, I want this to stick out the most. So I'm going to put blue glow on this side and then maybe like a, an orange glow on that side. So now I'm cleaning my brush. Really good. Got to get all that yellow off. Going for ultramarine blue. There's a little bit of white there. Oh, that is a high chroma blue right there. Hot diggity. All right. All right, now it needs to go lighter in value. So actually, I will go darker, and I will build up that lighter value. So I'm going to go darker, paint that in the background. Really soften out this edge here. I thought I was going to go more impressionistic, but I guess I didn't. That's okay. Oh, kind of lost the chroma there. Now I need to go slightly lighter. I don't know, should I have live music when I'm painting or is it better to just not have any music? Your thoughts would be appreciated. Oh, so close. A little bit more. Now it's getting too opaque there. I need to I need to thin that out a little bit more. Needs to go slightly lighter in value. All right, now going over onto this side, maybe I have a little bit of blue there. Just go, yeah, I'll add a lighter blue. Maybe I'll just go with the king blue. 
So that's a lighter blue. And here I just talked about not using lines. Soften that out, just like Bob Ross. There we go. No line. Well, maybe it reads as a line, but it's less of a line. Okay. Now the color on this one. Maybe I'll just do a regular orangey yellow color. Well, with the blue, it's kind of going more of a green. So let's try that out. Maybe. Okay, yeah, I, I can see it glowing just a little bit. I need to soften out that edge just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter in value. Clean the brush. Soften that out. That yellow needs to come back up here. I killed it. Nope. Lay it down. There we go. Now I have to get that. I ruined the painting, I should probably just stop. I should just stop ruining the painting. How about that? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm kind of kind of liking it. Oh, I need to talk in the microphone. I'm kind of liking it. Soften this edge as it goes up. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. And then I need to darken the value underneath that so that it reads like it's moving up and under. I'm almost out of time. And Break this shape a little bit. More paint. Get so light in value. There we go. All right. I am thinking 
I don't love the background. I mean, I only spent like five minutes on it, so I'm going to go with this darker value. Some of that black oil. Just kind of soften this out a little bit more. It'll be interesting to see how this thing dries out too, um, because I don't know if all these values will hold together or not. I mean, they should hold together, but I might have to oil it out to be able to see what's going on with those shapes. Okay, I don't know how well that reads. It looks like it's tilted just a little bit, so I need to untilt it. <laughs> this, I think, needs to go a little bit higher. Holy shiitake mushrooms. Where'd that brown come from? Oh my goodness. Oh, more raw umber and white. There we go. Go from the light shapes up into these dark shapes. Okay, I'm, I'm just double checking certain shapes. I'm okay with how this is turning. I think I want to flatten that shape out a little bit more. So I will come under here, get more of a greenish tone. Kapow. I mean, that's like comic book kapow. All right, I'm kind of digging this blue and the yellow that's going on there. It really makes this part in the center stand out a little bit more. I actually think I might let this dry and do some dry brushing over it. The, this part has a little bit too yellow of a rind, and I want to make it more white, so right when I thought I was done. I shouldn't say that, but um, right when I thought I was finished, when I was about to call it quits. I think I might need to let it dry. Or not. It's turning the dimensions a little bit better because then I have lighter value, lighter value, darker value, darker value. So it gives it 
more of that natural quality because not all of this ellipse is going to be lit the same. That's the other thing that I don't like about oil primed linen is it's really hard to get paint to stick onto the canvas. So even when I build up paint, I have to let it dry and then give it another go. But I don't know, what do you think? You are welcome, Serge, how long, however long that comment was. I haven't been looking over there. I've been working on my paintings. Um, but I, I think I will come back in a little bit later and pop the contrast of those a little bit more. But in terms of how it feels and looks, I think it's, it's feeling pretty good. I don't know, maybe I don't like this color here in the foreground. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try and experiment. Ready? I'm gonna go more gray in the foreground. Let's try it. Cooler color, here we come. I think um, by having a cooler color in the foreground, it's going to make the colors on the surface pop out a little bit more that are right next to the lemons. It'll, it'll give it more of the effect like light is bouncing off of the table into the lemons and then back onto the table. All right. I kind of like the, the color vibration that's going on between the two since the values are pretty close to each other. Um, the blue versus the orange. I don't know if you can see it on the screen very well, but. I'm also gonna. All right, I think I'm gonna call it a day. It was a good day. I got two paintings under my belt and now I'm gonna sign this thing. Need more paint. Always need more paint. There it goes. That's an F. That's an L, A, C, K. All right. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If not, that really sucks. And maybe you could watch one of the other videos because it might be more informative. I'm not sure. But it is fun to do this stuff live. It just takes me a while to get things set up. So hopefully this will 
turn out. Maybe I'll come back later and make some corrections. Not on camera, but you know, sometimes I'll go to sleep and I'll wake up in the morning and be like, nah, I didn't like that very much. But as of right now, it is almost five o'clock and I need to go in and make some dinner and then go to an art show. So I hope, hope you all have a great night. If you're interested in buying this, uh, you're welcome to go to my website, flaxstudio.com. And I uh, should be in the store there this next week. So whenever next week is, it's April 19th. So after April 20th, it should be on there. Probably be a couple hundred dollars. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. All right. I hope you have an excellent weekend. Goodbye.